you know, my name is John Mavis, my wife, uh, Elisa, and I, we've been married almost 17 years coming up uh, in August. And um, we uh, have eight children and we've been uh, serving with the Navy as chaplains, uh, or my, myself as a chaplain for the past about 12 years. And uh, now I work at Moody Bible Institute, but um, we have eight children and our third son, Titus, was adopted um, out of, uh, as an infant domestic adoption. So uh, Lisa and I, I think early on in our dating time, we were just talking about things that were important to us and things we valued. Both of us had a heart for providing opportunities for mothers who were trying to um, decide what to do with a child um, and or deciding whether or not to have an abortion and, and to give an, an alternative for life. And so that was something we both were passionate about even before we were married. So we just sort of gave it to the Lord with open hands and said, God, give us uh, wisdom and discernment about timing. And so we uh, early on in our marriage, we we were told that we may not have children earlier on. And um, and then eventually we we did become pregnant and had our first son, Ezekiel. But at the same time, um, we as soon as I think it was almost like the same week we found out our home study was completed. We also found out that we were pregnant again. And and also that same week, I found out that I was going to be deployed in about uh, six months for Afghanistan. <laughs> so it was one of those weeks where you had a lot of different things come together. Sometimes just a listening ear, sharing meals together, um, helping them process through and pray for them with that. If it's babysitting the children, that the, the biological children they already have, um, being a, just a friend to listen and, and process through emotions or things that are going on. Um, also, just being a network for other families. We all we all know different families that maybe the family that we're trying to support doesn't know in our community. And so sometimes I've found that the Lord would just provide those providential conversations where I might meet a foster foster family and and then be able to connect those those two families that didn't know each other in the past. Uh, and so I, I think uh, when God calls us to step out and that we all have to kind of wrestle with what are my fears and how are they shaping my view of God calling me to be a part of supporting adoption, whatever that might look like. Um, so trusting in God's provision, I think, is is a huge part of what we do as, as gospel believers as well. And that we trust in provision of Christ for our sins, but also the ways that he calls us to live out uh, our vocation. Scripture is just replete with um, so many beautiful pictures of how God takes the initiative in our lives, even when we were unable to uh, pursue him or to know him or to even want him. Um, and the mess of our lives before Christ um, and how the Lord pursues us uh, and allows us to be adopted so that we can call our Heavenly Father Abba is um such a, a wonderful theme throughout scripture. Adoption was a, as a metaphor that the Lord chose to, to describe how he redeems us, how he brings us into his family. Um, and so while adoption might look differently in the ancient world um, than it does today, so many of the facets are still the same. And uh, a part of that story that we get to tell every time we tell our adoptive story as a family is is first how God adopted us into our family. Um, and that's sort of such a cool thing for us as a family, as we talk with Titus um, and all of our children about adoption, that it's a commonality that we all have uh, in our family is, is to celebrate um, the adoption story. And for Anglicans um, and all Christians, but I think in our Anglican liturgy, our our baptismal uh, service is, is a beautiful picture of how God adopts us. And every time I, I lead a baptism or 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 they were at a baptism, I'm I'm just struck by the beauty of of that service to remind us of our adoption into the family of God, and regularly see the corollaries between um, even just our family's experience of adoption. Another just reality is Titus is African American and, and I'm I'm not African American. My wife's not African American, so um, our kids, you know, go to school and there's always the dynamic of hey, oh, you're 
your brothers, you know, um, <clears throat> or that's your brother. And, and so that is something that we just, and as we move around in the military, every new community we go to, we kind of have to revisit that, that reality of, of, oh, you're a, you're a blended ethnicity family and kids just kind of figure that out in school and, and how that works. So, uh, but that's actually been kind of a neat thing um, that has provided some opportunities for our kids even to talk about uh, our family and uh, what that means for us as a family that their classmates might say, oh, Titus is your brother. Yeah, he is. And, um, and what that story might mean. So uh, for the most part, it's been really good. It doesn't mean we don't have conversations sometimes about, um, about Titus's story um, or concerns he might have. Um, but, and then he's, again, um, I'm sure the years ahead, there might be more conversations, uh, as he, as he navigates his own identity and who God is calling him to be. 